In this course, we're going to explore how to invite external team members to your particular app to then collaborate. Uh, if I use Slack as an example, uh, you've noticed that when you get a Slack invitation, it has a clickable link to take you to um, a specific page to then join your team on Slack. So we're gonna build something similar. What I've noticed over time is that a lot more people are building SaaS applications where they do want to invite external people to work within their applications. So let's explore how we resolve the team invitation part. Okay, so let's just make an assumption that um, I work on a project. I am the admin of that particular project. Uh, so I have, a, I have a team basically. We have a project, we have a team, uh, and the team collaborates on various projects. And in my admin dashboard, I have an area where I can see the employees, people that work uh, at my company. Um, you know, you can call this a team basically, same thing. And then we have an input to invite someone to this particular team. So these people are already working within the team. I can remove them from the team and I can invite external people. Now the secret source to this particular course is how do we invite external people, have them land on a bubble page uh, and then be added to the correct team. Now, before we do that, let's have a look at the data structure first. All right, so in the repeating group, I'm just, I have set current page team employees of type user. I have page data, okay, that is of type team. If you notice, I have a slug forward slash apple and I'm, uh, I'm accessing the team and the team name, current page, team's name. All right, so we need page data of type team. Maybe this is company, uh, whatever you like. It's just a collection of people, right? Let's have a look at a team. So on the data type team, we have a list of users as admins, so we can have more than one admin. We really wanna have an admin here because we don't want regular employees or team members adding other people uh, to the team. We need someone to control this and then we can create conditional statements that say, if you're an admin, then you have this functionality, right? We can show and hide that invite input. We have employees of the team, which is also a list of users. We have a name of a team and we have a list of projects associated with the team. And then in the project section, we have a list of assignees uh, and a title. The team one is the most important thing here. Okay, so we are displaying the current page team's employees, which is a list of users, and then just the user data. And then basically we can run a workflow to remove them from this. So we can say, make changes to thing. Thing is the current page team. And we can say employees, remove, current sales user. Okay, so that removes a person from Team Apple. Now, let's get into the invitation part because this is the crux of this tutorial. So I have an input, okay, that's set to content type email just for form validation, and I've set the input not to be empty. So this workflow will only run if there's something in here and it looks like an email address. On the invite button, let's start the workflow. So what we're doing is sending an email. If you worked in any productivity app, you always get an invitation through your email. And you know, the two is basically the input emails value. And then we can set anything we like here. You've been invited to team, and then we can say current page team's name. Set your text here, all right? I don't think you should send this uh, with any images as sort of a, like a marketing email. Just keep a plain text for this. Now this is the important bits. We need another page for the person to land. And then we need to somehow link that page with the data source of the particular team. So I've gone ahead and created a new page, okay? So this page is called Team Invitations. This would naturally just be a, a segment uh, in the dashboard of the of the admin. 
but we're actually going to send them to a different page. We're going to send them to this page here. Let me preview this. So that link will bring them to this page. And that link will also include the slug Apple. So now we can see join team Apple and we know which team in the database uh, this particular URL is pointing to because of the slug that says Apple. So we have to construct the URL on this page in the email body, send it to the user, they click that link, land back with the slug on this page, and now we've linked the user with the team that they need to join. Which means now when we click on sign up, we can sign the user up and we can make changes to the current page team and we can add the current user as an employee, which means at that stage, they will show up in the repeating group. Okay, let's just go back to the team invitations because we need to have a look at how we construct the, the link for them to land on this page. Okay, here it is here. All right, so basically I've copied in the base URL. Now naturally, um, in production, this isn't going to be version test, it'll be your domain. So if this is called team base, it would be called, the link would be teambase.com, then forward slash, then the name of the page, maybe it's just called sign up. And then the important piece would be the forward slash current page team slug. So if I remove the slug, it's not going to resolve which team this person is signing up to. You can see that it just says join team, no team name. If I add the slug, well now we're pointing to a row in the database, and we know it's Team Apple. So that's the URL. So in my particular app, look, it's got no domain or anything like that. And it's on version test. So I've just gone, copied and pasted. Uh, I have to remove the slug because that's dynamic. So I've copied and pasted this URL, pasted it into the body email, forward slash, and then I'm accessing the current page team slug. Make sure that you are adding slugs when someone creates the team and the project, okay? If you don't know what a slug is, uh, let me just show you. If I go to a team, a slug is this section here, Apple. Whenever we create something in the database, Bubble gives us the option to add a slug. This is where we add it. Naturally, it'd be the name. If we don't add a slug, well, then we have to use a unique ID and it's not very pretty, is it? I'd rather use Apple. Okay. Okay, so we invite them by sending an email. We're not signing them up at this stage because maybe they never join. Who knows? We don't want redundant data in the database. We want to send an invitation and allow them to sign themselves up with their own password, not sending temporary passwords to the user. There's security risks around that. It's not very nice. Uh, it's not very clean from a UX point of view. And then at that stage, Yep, they are signed up to the team app uh, and then you can run other workflows around notifying the admin that invited them that they are basically joining the app. Okay, so that's just the starting process. That's how you get an external person signed up and connected to the correct team. So go ahead and explore uh, various workflows around this. Uh, we use this in various applications that we've built works 100% perfectly every time, so have fun with it.